I'm Jason. And I'm Jules. And, and we we're are friends, friends talking, talking, talking about, about stuff. stuff. I don't know how I feel about doing this. <laughs> because now they're going to know us more. A little bit. I and mean, to know us is to not like us. Possibly. Oh. I'm, I'm not going to get like, you know, too. I don't have anything written for this. I'm just. Uh, I'm not going to get like. We're not going to like divulge our most deepest, darkest, intimate secrets or anything. I thought that's what we do. No, we're just going to be like. Filmographies hey. and tell the secrets. I guess. I will tell you. So my mom died. Yeah. And I had to fly to Oregon. And I had like a real weird moment on the trip where I think it was kind of like a deja vu situation where I had seen people a little bit because you generally are barreled up with the same people for a period of time. Mm -hmm. I was there long enough where I was like, is that person from a show? Hmm. Is that guy from, did that person used to be an actor when they were a kid? And I was like, I mean, I know this isn't true. My brain is playing weird tricks on me. Is this mm -hmm. because I hang out with my kids all the time and don't go around normal people? Yeah. It was peculiar. One of the pilots or no i think they must have been a no it's flight, flight attendant. attendant it's one flight attendant he looked like he might have been a child actor though oh also probably just a mental illness on my behalf oh jules yeah i don't like flying was this the first time you flew alone yes yeah i've done it once coming back from san francisco i got increasingly more drunk each time because <laughs> the first time was so bad i should have gotten drunk i didn't Oh, man, I was, like, as soon as it, like, started to go up, I was like, <laughs> tipped, tipped back, eyes locked tight, like, just deep breathing. Luckily, it's so fucking loud, because it sounds like you're going to rip apart and plummet, mm -hmm. that uh, I don't think the person next to me noticed. However, they were doing something very strange a few minutes into the flight, where they were, like, had their head down on the tray table. Yeah. And I was like, what is this? I've seen that. And then they are doing it again. And then I was like, oh... They're not really, like, laying on the tray table. They have a dog and a bag underneath the seat, oh. and they're petting their little doggy. I've seen people try to sleep on those. I'm like... The person in front of you moves. It's a problem. My back isn't going to bend that far. Understandable. Deal with it. The valet at my first hotel in Portland? Yeah. She was like, who's that on your shirt? And I was like, oh, it's uh, Billy Crudup. She's like, he just got married. I was like, oh, yeah. Did I he? didn't know. He married Naomi Watts. Oh, did they actually get married? <laughs> yeah, they got married. Oh, I, didn't I didn't hear know. that either. He didn't call us. No, he didn't He didn't leave a voicemail. No. He should have. Billy, what the fuck? I know, dude. All the love we've given you. Yeah. As often as we call you, you can't call us? Come on. Right. Uh, upsetting. Yeah. Eventually, she got out of me that we have a podcast, and I was uncomfortable talking about it. But she's like, I'm going to listen to that. Yeah, you should have taken her phone and found it. She was- uh, And then licked it. Here you go. <laughs> i feel like she was super high because it was awkward like every time i had an interaction with her like the first time i like gave her my keys and i was like hey can you take my car for me again she's like what <laughs> it's like wait, you're the valet person what's going on here and then i was like maybe it's because i had no cash and i need to tip oh, yeah, so do. i made sure i got some some cash but i don't know it was strange a few times she's very nice you know what i like to do i like to fold the bill up and then put it in my fly oh and i just Right. They yeah. like that. And they go, sir. Sir, you your know. penis is shaped strange, <laughs> and that color does not look good. Yeah. You need to see some. How dare you? It you looks know. like I might get a paper cut. Mm -hmm. Roaches. In the hotel? No. I Where? was walking up the strip, you know, oh. up and down the strip. Oh, in Vegas? Yeah. Yeah. And I, like, stopped at the Walgreens, and I was going to have a cigarette, and I was drinking my water, and I was going to sit down on the, like, ledge that had wood chips and bushes behind it mm -hmm. and i, I sat on a ledge like it. that too outside a pizza place shit started moving and i said oh my god i've never seen a fucking cockroach in real life this is all cockroaches oh you haven't seen one ever no oh, not okay. in real life it was fucking horrifying wow i couldn't even believe that shit Guy lives a sheltered life over here i guess <laughs> this is uh swarming and swarming yeah when callie just reminded me of this i forgot all about this we were in chicago this would have been 2018 maybe we did a tour. We drove out, rented a car. To, uh, we stayed in Madison because uh, my friends at the time for like, I don't know, 15 years, they put on a music festival on Memorial Day, Labor Day. Which one's first? Memorial? The second one is Labor Day. Yeah. I don't really know. I think so. And, and that's when they have the music fest. And uh, I used to play in it, but you know, I don't do that anymore. And but I, I occasionally would still go back. It was a decent enough reason to go back to Madison for a weekend or whatever, you know? Madtown. 
Madtown. And uh, then we, we stayed at a, like a horse ranch, Airbnb. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we went to Milwaukee for a day, went, hung out with Paul and the family. We went to the zoo. Maybe that, no, that was the second time. First time, it, just Paul came out and he met us um, and we walked around for a little bit. Then we went to Chicago, right? And that was like the heart of the trip. And the hotel we stayed at was a Super 8. Apparently there had been torrential rain there um, before we had gotten there. So when we get into the hotel room, the carpets are damp. Oh. Like the whole place. That's a bad sign. The carpets are damp. Yeah. Hallway. You know what I mean? I'm like, what the hell is this? And they say, well, yeah, there was some rain and so some water and moisture got in. Well, all right. I guess I'll just be wearing my shoes Yeah. in the, in the, in the, uh hotel room there oh in your room too not just the hallways no no the room too because the hallways it one it's floor? like hallways it's like that you know real thin yeah bare it's basically like hardwood yeah carpet but then in the bed uh the rooms it's carpeting like this so yeah it's thicker and why wouldn't they close down that's fucking disgusting i don't know you should have not stayed there well it was one of those things like by the time we got into town we, i i drove so it was like you know, a couple hours on the road and fuck it. No more Super 8s. No. Have you graduated? I've graduated. I don't stay at bad hotels. That's the thing with Callie is she's frugal. She's used to being frugal. Yeah. Um, and although I'm not looking to stay at, you know, the Waldorf, uh, I don't mind a more recognizable hotel chain. We stayed at the fancy place in Chicago. Yeah, we did. And, and I was thinking because we're going to uh, Milwaukee in August. For a couple of days, we're taking the train out, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, we're going to do the state fair and you know whatever else. And so I was thinking on the last night, I might get a fancy hotel. I feel like it's like one hundred extra dollars, which is you know kind mm-hmm. of a lot. But if, but if you don't of. travel very often, it's worth it. If, and if you don't live a life of luxury, and you don't really pamper yourself. Yeah, why not? Yeah, you know. I told her I like that you get uh, massages whenever you go on vacation. <laughs> Yeah, she called me out. She's like, fell asleep? Oh, <laughs> really? Like, yeah, a little bit. I could hear myself snoring here and there. That's happened to me yeah. once. Oh, man. I had hurt my back real bad uh, the day before. Yeah. I had bent all the way over to pick up a piece of the toilet paper on the floor, <laughs> and I was like, oh, 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 and it completely ruined. I'm. It, my back's still a little bit fucked up. It's mm-hmm. been a long time since the trip. I was yeah. supposed to go to a stand-up show Thursday night, a free one. Jeff Tate was there. Oh. And I was going to uh, walk over or Uber or something, but I was like, nope. Guess I'll just uh, drink these beers and watch Barry on the laptop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I tweaked my back pretty good when I was taking care of my mom, just like lifting her in and out of bed and shit. So in the wrong situation, yeah, you, or, you get that. Hi! Yeah. Alarm. Like a bunch of rubber bands snapping. Yeah. Like, like oh, if that no. was just a warning shot, the real thing is going to fuck me up. Uh, I knew it was coming too. I was like, this is going to hurt eventually. It just feels weird right now, but it's coming. Yeah. Boy, boy did it. <laughs> oh, it was so great walking around Vegas with like a weird back pain the whole time. Oh, yeah. It's so fucking hot. Did you get any ganja? Yeah. I bought a pen first day I was in Portland. And was hitting that. God, dude, it's interesting. The the homeless people in Portland, like they set up shop around the hotel a little bit, and you would see more of them at night. There'd be people kind of milling around. You're like, oh, I see a lot of mental illness. Yeah. I was walking to the smoke shop, and I was slightly lost, but I was sort of following this guy, and then his pants like kind of fell down a little <laughs> bit, and I yeah. was like, oh, this guy this is a street guy. So I, I got the pen there, and I was hitting that like crazy, and then I had to throw it away because, you know, I was going to Vegas. Yep. So I was sad about that. And then I bought another one first night I was in Vegas. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, I immediately got one, threw that away before I flew out. Anyways, the homeless people, it was interesting by my hotel, which was a decent little hotel, but I never felt like unsafe, really. The tour that we went on for the Shanghai Tunnels... Mm-hmm. Apparently across the bridge, it's just fucking crazy over there. Oh. They're everywhere. Like not, they, there's just like pileups of them. Uh, I was uh, uncomfortable. Yeah. I was like, well, this isn't good. I'm just marching around looking for where I'm going to meet my sister, and uh, it's scary. <laughs> it's like these people are a bit scary. And then when we were done with the tour, we were trying to find her car where she parked, uh-huh. and we ended up behind this guy who was picking up cans. 
And he's picking him up, picking him up. Finds a needle, picks it up, flicks it a little bit. And we're like, oh, my God, he's going to shoot it himself. And he threw it away. But, like, he definitely was considering shooting what was left in there into himself. Hey, why not? Fuck, dude. It's It was pretty similar in Seattle. You know, like, there was – Seattle's weird because it's, like – I don't know if Portland's the same, but it's hilly. So you'll be like to get up to like the the you know f- famous fish market or whatever. If you're down closer to the shoreline, you have to walk up like you know four flights of stairs or take an elevator. Mm-hmm. Um, but down there, um, there was this, this street that went for I don't know three or four blocks, and it. It's it's kind of like a back road street. There wasn't much on it, uh, which is probably why this was happening. But it was just RVs, like those old fashioned like Breaking Bad RVs yeah. and uh, tents and lean tos and bikes and just and it's like fuck. I mean, we got to walk through here to get because what we were doing there, we didn't rent a car. We were just doing our car. But the closest one to our hostel was like a fifteen minute walk. We had to go through there unless we went all the way around. And it wasn't like unsafe or crazy or anything. It was just like depressing, if nothing else, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just I'm, like, God damn. I was feeling extra tender because my mom had died. So mm-hmm. I was uh, by day two after cleaning out her apartment with my sister, which I mean, we didn't get it all done, but we got a lot done. It was, uh, it was hitting harder and different. Yeah. Those Vegas homeless people. That's a different breed, man. Yeah. I can't even imagine that. They are in a hellscape of heat and opulence. And just outside Caesar's Palace, which is amazing, mm-hmm. I couldn't even fucking believe it when I was walking around in there. I was trying to find the buffet and it took me forever. I had to loop all the way around the building. Yeah. There's just like people in like stairwells outside with phones plugged in and they got those shoes on. Yeah. They just look sunbaked. It, oh, I can't even believe it, man. There was one guy shuffling around. Looked like he was 20. Looked like a nice young kid. And I was like, oh, this guy's fucked up. He's been partying. And he's got like red rimmed eyes. He's got kind of a weird smile on his face. And then I saw his uh, ripped, like, dirty sweatpants. Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah, he's wearing a sweatshirt. This is not, it's too hot for that. This mm-hmm. is a homeless guy. Well, it's unfortunate there because, yeah, it's like 120 during the day. And then it drops down to like 40. 35 sometimes at night so it's like what do you do right if you're walking around in all your gear yeah that yeah you can't get, sweat there's nowhere buckets, to hide it right but you then you to need wear to wear it at night i don't know where they would sleep but yeah vegas is a trip man because yeah not only is there like all this gambling and opulence and shit going on but it's like just within the walls they're just giving away food and yeah. you know drinks and all sorts of shit then outside people are suffering mm-hmm I kind of hated it. I, I remember being shocked that nobody else wanted to go to Vegas with me when I brought it up a couple of years ago. Yeah. And now I go and I'm like, well, yeah, I don't, who wants to go up and down the fucking strip? I, I did it. It was yeah. terrible. I it was hot out. I don't, it's mostly just hotels with lobbies and mm-hmm. expensive stores. It's not interesting. No. And I mean, you know, I don't live a lavish enough lifestyle where I'm interested in gambling yeah, I just went for that fucking giant More buffet. than maybe a hundred bucks just to... I didn't gamble a cent. Good for you. I couldn't bring myself to do it. I did gamble a little bit when I was there. I don't think I really did anything, you know. It was a, a roulette machine. Uh, so if anything, maybe I won 20 bucks. But it wasn't like... I'm not going to go, you know, play cards or anything. That's silly. I almost shit myself twice. Oh, cool. It was pretty exciting. I ate at that $80 buffet. Yeah. Oh, man. It was so good. But I had to go to the bathroom, like, by plate number four when I was eating desserts. Mm-hmm. I had, you know, I was maybe going to try to stretch out a little bit more. I don't know if they had bathrooms in there. It didn't seem like it. But I was like, well, I'm I would full. assume. Yeah. You would think so. Maybe they don't have them in the actual buffet area so that you leave. <clears throat> I guess. But can you not leave and come back? No, I don't think so. Okay. So, I mean, I was like, whatever. I'm full. So, I leave and I try to go to the bathroom and can't really find a bathroom and i get to the end of the hallway and they're like we need to see your room key to go past this point and i had gone through this area before and nobody cared but this new guy was like nah and i was like okay and he said turn around and go back the other way and by this point you didn't have your room key i wasn't staying at caesar's palace oh i see so i'm i'm scooting back the other way and like i'm starting to get the farts a little bit did you ask him where a bathroom was 
uh, no. He, I just said, how do I get out of here? So he, I, there was a bathroom right outside the buffet place, mm. and luckily I got there in time. Yeah. Now, the second time, <laughs> I had had that big steak dinner, and I was waiting on a corner for quite a while for my Lyft driver to come, and it just kept getting worse and worse in my stomach, and traffic was bad. And then she finally was able to get me, but she's like, it's going to be a long time, Mr. Jason. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's uh, They shut down the strip for this parade. And I was like, oh, fuck. So I'm just trying to make small talk with her, but I can hear my stomach making the noises. And again, I was I luckily made it to the, the, the hotel room. Maybe not that interesting of stories, but boy, I, it was close. Man. Yeah. Eating just crazy food and then wandering around. Mm-hmm. Ah, Got to be careful. Yeah. Got to be careful. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't normally gorge myself and then be out in public. I would be at home. <laughs> right. You know, I, I would. I would just be like, "Yeah, I'm going to go for a long walk now." I think Vegas was the first place where I saw a Walgreens that was selling alcohol. Oh, it's great, dude! I was like, "Oh, weird." Everything is so expensive, but then the Walgreens, the CVS, and the Targets are like, "Yeah, we have dollar water and three dollar beers, no problem." Yeah, you, everywhere else the water is five dollars, the beers are nine dollars. Yeah, the person I went with, um, she, I was, I was seeing her at the time. She wanted to go to, God, I can't remember the name of it, but it's some EDF festival. Uh-huh. They hold it on. Oh, Burning Man. An old uh, racetrack. Okay. It's not Burning Man. It's like I don't know. There was an owl involved in the marketing. She paid. She got like two passes, which themselves were like four hundred bucks. She rented a room at Aria, which is just sort of right off the strip. One of those newer ones that's sort of tucked away. And it was a three day event. She got a pass for all three days, and with it came entrance to a pool party on Friday. Uh, you know, with some DJs that she liked or whatever. So we went to that, and this is the first time I'm getting desert sun. Yeah. You know, throughout the major- the entirety of my life up to that point, I've never had to worry about the sun. I've never been burned. You know, I tan, and that's the extent of it. Yeah, I got burned like a motherfucker. So when we're out at this pool party, first off, like one of them um, metal bottles of Bud Light, that's like 14 bucks. Yeah. Mixed drinks are, you know, like 19 or whatever, 20 bucks. So I'm already feeling the pain from that. It, because it's a pool party, I just had on shorts. And she had on a bikini, I think. Two-piece, maybe. Uh, but we're not swimming. There's like a, it, it, It's like an MTV video pool party. Yeah. Where it's like everybody's really good looking and throwing money around and, you know, young and vibrant. And I'm like, I'm not going to get crazy here but the dj she wanted to see was like third or fourth or something so we're just standing there kind of in this uh pool outside in the upstairs of a hotel and i'm just baking i'm not drinking any water oh god right she isn't either uh and then when we get back to the room i'm like holy shit i think i got a sunburn (laughs) right and then every time i went out into the sun thereafter I had a full, like, a T-shirt on, uh-huh. but I could just feel it, right? And I'm peeling. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm dying. It's I had leprosy. to go get aloe. And, but she was, she she liked Ciroc. You hear that? It's a vodka. Yeah. Um, so she got some of that shit, and she drank it. And one day we were going off the strip to a mini mall, like, in the city kind of-ish, uh, suburb-ish proper, for a massage and we're waiting for, we were taking the city bus and we're waiting for the bus and she's just puking on the side of the road and you know it's just feeling she drank too much or hung over it's the heat. too much dehydrated it was just uh, you know plus when we went to the so the first night after that pool party um we just passed out yeah. and we didn't even go to the first night of the festival and in fact she was being really unpleasant so when I woke up Saturday morning, I actually was on my phone looking to see how much a flight back would be because she had the plane tickets. Yeah. Right? She had bought all of these things and it invited me to go. Um, so I'm like, uh, <laughs> eh, tough it out, right? We do a buffet for breakfast or whatnot. But then the actual event, yeah, it's like I had an old motor speedway, you know, and it's at night, thankfully. But uh, 
it's just like huge hangers just pumping EDM and like there's a concession where you can get like an eight dollar slice of nasty pizza and water is like six bucks yeah. and you know there's some ferris wheels and everything but i'm just like i am wiped and we're, and we're on concrete you know so when you sit down you're on concrete when you're walking and standing and listening to music you're just on this concrete my legs and my back i'm like ah this is not very fun no so then we got on the bus the shuttle to go back and the one we got on dropped us off i think it i think the place is called like the flamingo hotel yeah which was like a 20 minute walk from our hotel and so we're just walking what hotel oh you're at aria Aria, yeah which is kind of you know where that eiffel tower was yeah i think i might have actually walked if you went the other way walking back from from caesars Mm -hmm. it's like right kind of the block or two before the end of the strip oh and then you're you're back going towards the airport you know but it was tucked away I want to say there was a nicer hotel that we kept having to walk through, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, I was back at Mandalay Bay at the, like, the very end of the strip. Okay. The beginning. Yeah. Bege- so we were probably, I think we were on the other side of the street, because that's the same side of the street with like Hard Rock and the Eiffel Tower. Uh, that was relative. I don't even think we went the third night. I think we just ordered room service and kind of hung out. I'm sorry she's mean to you, buddy. Well, you're, you're a very good travel partner. I've vacationed with you. You're and I very think, agreeable. You don't have any obnoxious tendencies. Yeah, I try. I mean, hey, when you're on vacation, it's like whatever, man. You know, when we were in the Bay Area um, hanging out with Callie's friend, she was like, oh, I want to take you to this marine place where they basically built an indoor replica model of – alameda and the the water that goes between it and oakland and the sort of bay area and then they release water and see how it like flows if they were thinking about like making some geological changes or some shit studying the water it's but it it used to be for like i don't know the marines or something um and now it's just a place you can go to to see you know every now and again there's water that comes out and Callie's just like, oh, yeah, it sounds great. And I'm like, it actually does. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Right? And we got there, and you have to walk on this thing, and it's way tucked away, and you would never know it's there. And it was fucking baller. It was a, it's like the size of like a roller rink inside this building. Nice. And the, this, and then you can walk up steps, and you're looking down at it. You know, like in Chicago, in the Museum of Science and Industry, they have a scale replica of downtown Chicago. And, like, trains are going around, and they have all the little buses and shit on it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, this is fucking dope. Sounds pretty good. I actually just bought an N scale size train. It's the second to smallest model train. This guy, he likes trains. And I came with a track, and he's got the switch to make it drive. Uh. I'm going to, I got a, Callie bought me a table to do, like, puzzles and Lego stuff on. Uh-huh. Um, I haven't really used it for that um, primarily because I, I, I have a Lego Atari that she got me, uh-huh. but it, it'll be like the size of your laptop. And I just don't have anywhere to display these things. You know, I don't want to put it together and then take it apart. Yeah. That seems stupid. It does. Especially because now with the newer models, they come pre bagged. So if you follow the instructions, you go bag by bag. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. If you just break it all apart, are you going to read the instructions backwards to put them in there? No. You're right? not going to do it. But um, I figure, fuck, this train will probably fit on this table. Um, I might get, I might cut some plywood to put in it because it's an inlay. But even, even if I don't, I think I'm going to build a little mossy little thing for the train. Train guy. Yeah. Good job, train guy. Yeah. Well, so I, we probably talk about this all the time on the show, but we've known each other, what? 42 years? Yeah, it seems like it. 2009? Nine? 24 so- years. <laughs> uh 2019 no, 14, was, uh, 14 years. Yeah. yeah oh you were serious with 24 years i was for a second there and i was like wait a second <laughs> yeah it's been a long time i'm not a math man no i know you've been telling me about the math man prophecy exactly you know, that's not you it's not so yeah 14 man that's crazy it's almost as long as i've been here well i think we became friends right after you got here it was like a year after i got here maybe not that even that long i don't think it was that long yeah but even then it was just like doing videos here and there 
I think we did a trick or treat one with Ian dressed as Mario. It, I don't. It wasn't Mario. It was just a weird mask. Okay. We didn't use that one. Uh, yeah, it we didn't. I don't even good. remember what the hell it was about. Uh, I think Audrey. It was a bowl of condoms that she. Was oh, that's out right. To little kids. That is absolutely correct. Didn't cut together good. No, nah, but we're just some movie guys, kind yeah. of guys who watch movies and dorks. It's kind of like for me and Paul, we got together in the music, but it was the movies that kind of. Um, have you gotten anything in the mail? What do you mean? Oh, never mind. What? Uh, what the fuck the is movies it? is what sustained us. What? God, what's that mean? No, nothing. Okay. Just checking how your mail system's working. <laughs> I, get, I get mail. Okay. Got that my Pelicari in the mail. You did. That's right. Oh, I should eventually be getting some sort of VHS to computer thing. Will it work for me? It didn't for you. Will it work for me? Doing this show with you is uh, going back and just being like, man, they were young. Because everybody's got baby voices. Oh, and like in our in the sketches? in the movies that we watch oh, the, for this show. Yes, yes. You know, even if they're like thirty, you're just like, whoa. Yeah, people's voices change. It's so weird. So much over time. It does. My I was listening to my first CD not too long ago, and I was like, holy shit. And you'd never think that at the time. No, you're just like, yeah, man. Yeah, I sound like a man. Nah, man. What's up? I'm. 19 <laughs> like nah you got old man voice no. I'm 19 19 I'm just uh looking for some trouble yep. you know is that what kids say it so is looking for some trouble you want to hear a crazy story I do uh so there was a uh I got a call uh, I got like a promotion at work uh-huh. um where now I I kind of oversee the operations for all of the Minneapolis properties uh-huh. um so now all the other managers that were my associates now they report to me and so i just been getting an increase in like emails and phone calls and shit most of it i don't have to do anything on they're just looping me in so that i'm aware of it but every now and again i have to do something uh additional to my regular activities but considering i had already been doing that when i do receive my pay increase which i hopefully will soon um that'll make it a little bit sweeter because i was doing that shit anyways but I got a text yesterday from Muhammad. Hey, uh, there's a guy parked in a guy's reserve stall, and um, they want him towed, right? So I contacted my boss, who used to be hands-on there, which I'm now going to start taking over. And I said, hey, are we clear to tow? You know, just want to make sure, because we've towed people in the past, and it's bit us in the ass. And he said, yeah, do it, you know. So I text the tow guy. I said, hey, you know, uh, here's a sitch. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll get a truck out there right away, you know. And I don't hear anything. That was probably like 2.30, almost 3 o'clock. I said, here's the number for the guy on site. Uh, he can, if you give him a call, he can show you where the car is and whatever. And I, I don't hear anything. So by the time I get home, it's now about quarter to five. They're all dead. Well, no. So I sent the guy a quick text like, hey, you know, I, I just realized what time it is because I hadn't heard from him. So I said, you know, at this point, I wouldn't worry about sending out the truck or whatever. And I still haven't heard back from him. So when I'm at work yesterday, they're talking about this incident <laughs> with a tow truck. And I go, is this yesterday? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess the truck just called the guy and without getting back to touch with me and um, went out there, was getting ready to tow the truck, but the owner of the truck had come down at this point and he jumps into his truck. He's like, no, nah, you you guys aren't taking my truck. And they're like, yeah, dude, it's already on the hook. You could pay us a drop fee and we'll set your truck down or whatever, but um, this is happening. And the security guy manager he's down there and the guy in the truck he's sitting in the truck you know he kicks and hits one of the other, the tow truck drivers in the temple whoa and like knocks him down and the security manager's like yo man you better watch the fuck out i already called the police anything more and you're going to be in fucking trouble so he jumps out of the what do you mean more anything trouble more more yeah. trouble you're already going to jail yeah right but anything more you're going to be in more trouble. So he jumps out of his truck, runs over to the tow truck because there's another guy in the in the tow truck, and he starts working the levers trying to get his car down. What and the-, the other guy gets out at this point, and he's like, yo, man, stop it. And he picks him up, and he fucking body slams him on the ground. Wait, who, who got the body The tow truck slammed? guy. 
slams the the guy oh great on the ground right and at this point the security guy is like man i would not get up because you're about to get fucked up (laughs) he was ready to fuck him up too yeah right two tow truck drivers alone ain't something i want to fuck with and now and then you got this other guy there right and so he pays drop the truck you know, and fucking, he, he was up seeing a, a defense attorney at the time. So he calls him up during all of this and he's like, hey man, these guys are fucking assaulting me and shit. And they let him pay the drop feed and he was able to leave. Apparently. Kicking the guy in the head. Yeah, apparently. Wouldn't you want to press charges? Well, they, so they called the police, but they weren't showing up. Yeah. They in fact, they, they ended up not at, at all showing up. Yeah. The Minneapolis police department's real piece of work. <laughs> the dude called them back and, oh, yeah, they're supposed to be here. And, you know, and so they just said, fuck it. They dropped the truck. He paid. Um, but his defense, his lawyer was like, don't, do not do anything. I mean, if you've seen a defense attorney, yeah. you're already in some shit. Yeah. Now you're assaulting a guy probably on video with witnesses. That shit's going to come up in trial. Yeah. Or whatever, you know. So then the police called the security guy like later that night um, just to follow up. And he's like, you motherfuckers didn't show up. I had a guy assaulted, right? Well, you know, we were busy. And he's like, fuck that. He hangs up on him. And they call him back and he go, we're the Minnesota police. I know who the fuck you are. (laughs) Do not call me again. And he fucking hung up on him again. And then they came and shot him? Uh, Hopefully they won't. But he's a... A marine guy oh. from the 70s. Okay. You know, but I was like, holy shit. Because then I'm thinking, I wonder what the guy that I text, don't worry about the truck, what he was thinking. Because by this point, this had already occurred. Yeah. Right. Um, so he's probably like, what the fuck? This is a joke. <laughs> that's a pretty wild story. Isn't it? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, man. I mean, I've seen people get belligerent, but I've had people threaten me. I had one guy, he, he was pulling out of a, a garage. This fucking machine ain't working, man. The fuck? And I said, oh, yeah, this this isn't our ticket. I fucking, I pulled this ticket at the entrance. N-word. He was, he was black, too. Oh, okay. And I said, man, this this isn't even our address, dude. This is what our ticket, there's no way this green ticket <laughs> managed to work its way into a box of white and black tickets i bet the date was weird too he just yeah it was it from above the ground i'm gonna have this fucking car and his girlfriend's like baby <laughs> what are you what are you doing just pay the all day fee now because you tried to pull fast one right? right i've had so many people no that's the one i grabbed and no i'm afraid not oh here it is <laughs> did you even look uh, if you can oh here it is that means it's <laughs> readily available people is good people hmm I mean, I'm trying to think if I have anything else. Anything else at all, Jason? Trip is sad. Yeah. Trip is expensive. I did pay $14 for a disgusting Nathan's chili cheese dog and some burnt french fries. And I did not opt into the $5 water, even though I was very thirsty, outside that arcade that I went to. Did I send you pictures of the arcade? A couple. The Mission Impossible game was fun. Yeah. Some of the other games were hard. Hmm. There was this gunslinger one. You got to hold that gun up. Yeah. And after like a couple of minutes, I was like, my arm, my arm tired. You know, I played a really cool arcade game once where it's a driving game, Uh but it's also a shooting game. So you can be two players and one can drive and one can shoot. That sounds fun. Or you can be one player driving with one hand and shooting. It's like, you know, like a probably from the late eighties, mid early to mid nineties. It sounds hard. But uh, yeah, it was like nothing I'd ever played before, man. I watched a documentary on pinball. Back in the day, it was like more like pachinko. There were pins. So when you dropped the ball, it would just ricochet around. And then they banned them. They were like, this is gambling. Which I don't understand that. And so it was illegal. Yeah. But then, I think it was in the 60s or 70s, a guy added the flippers. and Oh, okay. That's what made it gambling. The ball just boings around. There's, there's no control. Right? It's pinball. Yeah. But when, once the flippers came in, and they actually had a guy play it, I think, in the House of Representatives in Congress to show them. He hold the flipper, and it catches the ball, mm. and then he fucking shoot. He's like, I'm going to shoot it in that corner. Boom, and he does it. Because uh, this one dude, man, he was like a marvel. He did like this weird 
dancing body movements and he would thrust with his hips and shit. He would get down real low and pop up, you know, like a martial arts man. Sounds like that dance fighting. Kind of, yeah. Capoeira? Capoeira. Uh, Only the strong. Pinball hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm always like, I love it. And then I play it. I'm like, I don't like this. I like it a little bit. I could... I can't. I'm, I can never get anything to do anything. Oh, yeah. I'm not good at it. I'm just... I keep I'm, hitting that same run. It's like, I've already seen the alien. I had a roll of quarters that my sister gave me from my mom's house. Oh, yeah. Apartment. And I was like, all right, I'm bringing them to the pinball place. And I sure did. Yeah. And I couldn't even spend them all. I got bored. It was weird. When I went to Miami, coming back, um, we had brought five rolls of quarters because our plan was to drive down to key west and we knew that there were tolls mm. but when you rent the car they just give you the um, pass and then they'll you know tally up afterwards and whatever so we had no use for them and coming back they flagged my bag in security when i went through the x-ray because i had five rolls of quarters you know like what the hell is this yeah what is this i, I fight people sir come over here what is it oh it's quarters yeah. it's like well what, what do you think it was explosions i guess <laughs> got explosions in there yeah maybe all right so the plan for this is to chop it up slightly boost it not add anything to it easy breezy cover girl you know it maybe right. it's maybelline so there you go jules wanted to do this did you like it yeah go ahead and give us a call at 763-634-1897 mm-hmm. that could be it that is it is it i don't know <laughs> yeah we don't know let us know what you think yeah well, because after having now done this, I realized that, yeah, it's exactly the same as any of our other episodes. It's just we're not talking specifically about a movie. Yeah. So you, you get the same flavor. I'm not watching any other movies either, so yeah. I got no other <laughs> movies to bring up at all. Yeah. Uh, I watched Extraction too. I told you that. Yeah. That was actually pretty enjoyable. That was good. They do these oneers in there. What does that mean? Like a one shot? Yeah. But You hate one shots. I do if they're noticeable and um edited multiple shots to appear like a one shot Mm -hmm. which they do in this too but they and you can kind of see where it's cutting but it's it's really enjoyable and and considering the amount of action like helicopters and trains and huge prison fights and shit (coughs) it's like even if this shot is only actually three or four minutes piece together with this other one considering his arms on fire at one point it's like still pretty legit pretty good guys yeah so extraction two, 10 out of 10 yeah yeah definitely all right i've been jason i've been jules and we talked about stuff as friends yep is that what it's called we did each other oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, see you next time <laughs>